Hello, I'm Mera Lehtinen from Aalto University. In this short video, I will discuss project networks. So, what's in it for you? Well, after this short video, you're able to describe what project networks are and what are the benefits of networking and explain the network actors' characteristics and actor relationships. So, what are project networks? Well, Project network is a temporary interorganizational network of firms set up for the shared purpose of delivering a project. Project networks often include a very heterogeneous constellation of actors. Usually actors can influence a network relative to their characteristics. However, whether a single actor can control the network is debatable. Boundaries of network are highly dynamic. This means that during the life cycle of a project network, new actors enter the network while existing actors leave. Also, the actors' position and characteristics may change in the network over time. Project network is also temporary, meaning that it is set up at one point and after the project has been delivered, the network ceases to exist. However, many project-based companies may reconstruct their network partly with some same actors from project to the next because of the presented good reasons for networking. But why should project networks be set up? What are the benefits? What are the good reasons for networking? Well, there are many good reasons for project networks. For instance, network partnerships can decrease transaction costs compared to markets. Network relationships can also provide access to resources such as information and technology owned by other actors. Network relationship may also help align different interests among network actors. Finally, network relationships may enhance learning through knowledge, knowledge absorption from other network actors. All right, as said, the network actors are heterogeneous, but what does that mean in practice? Well. It means that actors' goals can be very different and even divergent, both in short and long term. This means that some actors might be concerned with their own benefit only in the project and not with the project's benefit per se. For instance, um, a contractor might have a goal to maximize own profit with additional work in short term, while a municipal actor might want to secure long term, long -term benefits for society with the sacrifice of short term budget. Actors also possess different resources. Some actors, such as contractors in infrastructure projects, may have many personnel, for instance, while governmental actors lack personnel to manage projects but have access to public finance. In turn, um, consultants might possess valuable knowledge that others do not have. Project network actors also have different roles, meaning that while some can be identified as suppliers, others are financiers and so forth. Some also deliver the project and can be identified as contractors or system integrators, particularly in the context of engineering and infrastructure projects. Lastly, position. Actors have different positions in project networks. Some actors can have more connections to other actors, that is, they have more direct relationship with others. As in the slide, you can see the customer company in the middle has two, connections while others have one. So some actors might only have few direct connections as mostly indirect connections via others. For instance, in the context of engineering and infrastructure projects, subcontractors and suppliers are often actors who are less connected as they might have just one connection to the main contractor or systems integrator. While the contractors, systems integrators are often well connected to others and positioned quite center in the network. The position in the network may determine the possibility to influence others and control the network. For instance, central actors with many connections might have some sort of advantage compared to actors with fewer connections when it comes to project decision making. For those who are interested in learning more about networks in general, they should look into social, network, social networks and social network analysis. Uh, I have put an exemplary reference at the end of this video and slideshow. 
All right, talking about network position takes us to relationships in network. Actors have different kinds of relationship in project networks and the relationship can be characterized with several properties. Relationship in project network means that there is a, some kind of exchange going on. The actors can exchange uh, materials, knowledge, money, information, so forth, so forth. We can also divide relationships based on whether they are contractual or non-contractual. Some also call these as formal and informal relationships, respectively. A contractual relationship means that the exchange is formal and both actors have agreed on the exchange in legal terms. In turn, a non-contractual relationship means that the exchange is not legally agreed and that the actors might debate on the terms of the relationship, that, that is, what is the exchange and how does it happen. Whether the relationship is contractual or non-contractual, trust comes into play. One could argue that non-contractual relationships have a higher level of trust because the actors do not rely on legal terms regarding the exchange. On the other hand, some actors might just rely on non-contractual relationships because forming contracts may take a lot of resources, both time and money, lawyers and so forth. Commitment, that's an attribute of relationships in project networks. Commitment describes how committed the actors are in looking after the relationships. Some actors may be very committed to taking care of their relationship, for instance, even by forming long-term contracts that may last over several project networks. Whereas other actors might be very short-term and specific with the intention not to continue the relationship later. Monitoring. Relationships may or may not require monitoring. For instance, contractual relationships are often monitored for any breaches of contract. On the other hand, non-contractual relationships might not require so intensive monitoring. The monitoring can relate to trust in the sense that when actors trust each other more, they might not monitor the relationship that intensively. All right, this concludes the basics of project networks. However, to give you something to think about, I have prepared some puzzling questions. How do the characteristics of a project network influence project management? What about the actor characteristics and different relationships? Project management aside, what about network management? Can a project network be managed? For instance, managing the interaction within the network versus managing other actors. If so, how? I have listed some optional further reading for students interested in learning more about networks and network management. All right, that should be all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and I see you in the next one.